we're looking at the third of our passages in our This Is Us series, reminding each other of who we are as disciples of Jesus. Um, we've seen that we're a redeemed family. Uh, Jesus has done everything necessary to redeem us, to save us, to um, deal with our sin. And he has adopted us to be a part of his family. Um, we are God's children. And as a family, we seek to, to love each other, to share our lives deeply. Um, and all of this flows. We're a redeemed family of servants on mission. And this passage is focusing in on what it means for us to be servants. So read this passage a few times. Uh, familiarize yourself with, that, with it. Um, note things that stand out for you, questions you might have. Um, pray. Ask God to help you to understand his word so that you'll be able to teach it well to others. And as always, I'm going to highlight just a few things that have stood out for me. Um, the passage starts with this big call saying, The end of all things is near. It really places uh, the urgency before us. Eternity is coming. Jesus is coming again. And therefore, because this is true, be alert and of sober mind so that you may. Now, I don't think I would have ended that verse like that. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be alert and sober minded. Be ready and um, focused so that you may. If I were writing, I probably would have said so that you may uh, get to work, that you may share the good news of Jesus, that you may do the works that God has prepared for you to do. But that's not what Peter writes. Peter focuses us and he says, the end of all things is near. Therefore, be alert and of sober mind so that you may pray. Service in God's family begins on our knees. And we need to remember this. We need to be prayerfully dependent on God. Yes, the end of all things is near. Uh, Eternity is coming. And in order for us to be alert and sober-minded, for us to focus and serve well, we need to be people of prayer. And this then flows into all of these areas of service that Peter focuses in on. Um, again, above all, he says, above all, I don't know how you would finish that, but I might not have written, love each other deeply. But that's where Peter says, says pray and then love each other deeply. Because love covers over a multitude of sins. Love. In this family of God, we're called to love each other. And this, Peter would have heard Jesus saying, um, As I have loved you, so you must love one another. The day after Jesus said that, Peter witnessed the greatest um, display of love the world has ever known. In loving service of us, our Lord Jesus laid down his life. So when Peter writes, love each other deeply, he has that kind of love in mind. And then when he says, because love covers over a multitude of sins, um, I think we need to understand this as saying, uh, as fire needs oxygen to breathe, uh, love takes away the, the oxygen that sin needs to survive. Um, love will stop sin um, becoming an issue between us in God's family. Um, we really need to be praying that, that we would love this way, that nothing evil will be allowed to breathe for long in our church family. We need to keep short accounts with one another uh, the last days, the end of all things is near, so we need to love each other deeply. Not letting sin distract or separate us from one another, or sin destroying our unity. Rather, loving each other deeply, um, and that will mean that it covers over, it makes us forgetful about how we have been wronged. And we pray that others will be forgetful of how we have wronged them, because we love each other, we are family. And this then flows into um, what Peter says next, uh, offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. 
And there's a, a lot of each other and one another language, serving others. Um, what Peter's talking about is other person-centered service. This isn't self-service. Uh, we're looking out for the needs of others. And offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Um, in the original uh, situation that Peter was writing into, um, people, if, if somebody arrived in a town, they would go to the town square and wait for somebody to come along who would offer them a hospitality. And for Christians, this was uh, particularly necessary because they were uh, strangers and aliens in the world, as Peter has already said. P the society around them were looking, looking down on them, very suspicious of them. And so Peter's saying, offer hospitality to one another. He's saying, make sure that we care deeply for those around us. When somebody arrives in town, if they're a brother or sister in Christ, invite them in. And um, we need to have open homes with one another because we're family. And this has implications for us. Uh, this isn't so much talking about hosting dinner parties. This is meaning as family and be willing to invite people into our mess, into the chaos of our lives um, because we love each other. And I think it's great for us to, to flesh out together in our groups what that might look like for us. How can we be more hospitable with one another? So he says, the end of all things is near. There's an urgency about this. This should drive us to our knees that we are prayerfully dependent on God to equip us for the acts of love and service that he has prepared for us to do. This flows into us, loving each other deeply. Uh, a great expression of that love is us offering hospitality to one another. And then this flows into uh, the last two verses, which are all... Uh, specifically speaking about uh, serving. Each of us should use whatever he has received, whatever gift you have received to serve others. God has gifted his church, his people, his family, um, and we should use whatever gifts we have received to serve others. Now, a lot of time people spend a lot of time trying to figure out how they've been gifted and they spend little time actually serving where I think Peter would be urging us to say, just get busy serving. It will become clear in time how you have been gifted. Uh, gifts are very often discovered in service. We are to be faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. What we see here is that these gifts are gifts of God's grace. Um, the words that we get to speak to one another are the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised. To him be the glory. So looking at verses 10 and 11, as they speak about how we should serve, um, we are serving the gifts we have received are gifts of God's grace. And we are to use them uh, with the strength God provides. So if we are speaking, um, and all of us have opportunities to speak the good news of Jesus to others, we need to be mindful that we are speaking the very words of God. If we are serving, and there are countless ways for us to serve, we need to do that service with the strength God provides, not in our own strength, or else we will be, um, we'll become burnt out, or we'll become discouraged, um, or disillusioned, or uh, we'll become proud and puffed up because of our wonderful acts of service. Peter's saying, no, 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 serve with the strength God provides, and then here's the motivation, the the reason to serve, so that. You look out for phrases like this. He's giving us the reason. Um, so the end of all things is near. Be on our knees praying. Love. Show hospitality. Serve others. So that. Here's the reason. So that in all things God may be praised. Through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. In everything we do, 
all these acts of service that we have, we want to be serving in a way that will bring glory to God. In Mark 10, verse 45, our Lord Jesus said that the Son of Man, talking about himself, did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And we need to reflect on just how incredibly we have been served by Jesus. And then we need to remember that this Jesus is coming again. But until he comes, he has prepared good works for us to do. Therefore, let's be ready, alert, prayerful, on our knees, praying that God would help us to serve as an outflow um, of thankfulness for how we've been served. It should be a great joy for us that we get to serve each other. So let's Pray that we would be a people who love each other deeply, that our homes and our time and our gifts, that we are hospitable with those things and that we use whatever God has given us, our time, our talents, um, our money, our homes, that we use all that God has given us to serve others faithfully, stewarding God's, God's grace to us. Let's speak as if we're speaking the very words of God, let's serve in God's strength so that in all things God may be praised. So I really encourage you as you dig into this with your group this week or as you teach it to others, um, let's pray that God would really stir our hearts to be a people who rejoice in serving because we've been phenomenally served by Jesus and that we'd keep serving until that day when we meet our Lord Jesus in glory. And when for all eternity, we will be praising our God, to him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. God bless as you dig into this further. Mm-hmm.